Okay, so this will be an intro to Grasshopper. Um, first, when you open it, you can either type Grasshopper or you can click on this icon here, Launch Grasshopper. Um, this is the canvas, so if you uh, pan, you can hold the right, mount, the right uh, mouse button to pan, use the scroll to zoom. And you could either go into the tabs up here find a component and drop it in or you can double click on the canvas and if you know the name of the component you're looking for rectangular grid you can click and drop it in that way so in both cases you're pulling in a component dropping it onto the canvas and grasshopper reads from left to right so what you often will do is you'll start with a kind of a parameter so in this case either a um, you know a curve or a line or a, a point so in this case um, let's drop in a point so again you can click on these uh, areas and pull down from the drop list here uh, a component or there's tabs up here that you can pull in. All right, so I just dropped in a point. Again, the other way to do that is to double click on the canvas and type point and click, and you can bring it in that way. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect, we're gonna connect uh, Rhino geometry to Grasshopper. Okay, so I'm gonna create a point in Rhino so I'm going to type point, enter, and then click. Okay, so I have this point. Right now it's not associated with anything, but I want to tie it to this. I want, it, I want this point in Grasshopper to communicate with that so that when I move this in Rhino, it'll still associate it with this component. Okay, and then from here we can connect it with other components and we can kind of build our script or our command that. So I'm going to select this point, select the point here, right click on it, and then say set one point. Okay, now you'll notice it went from orange to white, meaning that it's it has data in it. So it is associating with this reference point. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to delete this, from that, I can create, for example, a sphere. So if I double click and type sphere, you'll zoom in on this component and it'll have inputs on the left and it'll have outputs on the right. So the inputs are what it's looking for. So if you mouse over any of these inputs, it'll tell you what kind of information it needs. So the B stands for base plane. So I could either give it a plane or I could give it a point in this case. If I mouse over this, it's looking for a radius. So what's the radius of the sphere you want me to create? All right, so I'm going to connect the point to the base plane here. And if you look, when I mouse over that, it's not just telling me what it's looking for. That number one represents the default value that it's going to start with. So when I just plug in that point, it's creating a sphere with a radius of one by default. So it's giving me this visualization of a sphere with a radius of one. So I'm going to plug in a number slider into the radius so that I can see the sphere change its uh, diameter in real time. Um, so I'm going to go to number slider and drop that in. And again, to get there, I could, I could type slider click on this or I can go under params input number slider there's a bunch of other ways that I can feed in a number I could also just do a panel where I double click and I type a number and this number four I could plug into that give it a number that way but the nice thing about a number slider is you can control that uh, point value or that number value so I can plug this in 
now I can control the radius and see it update in real time, the radius of that sphere. So right now its limit is 0 to 1 by default. But if I double click on this, let's say I want a max of 20. I can set the max to 20, set the minimum if I want you know, a negative number for some reason I can do that. I can set the number of digits number of you know decimal points here so I can now change that to be a lot larger okay so I have this uh, sphere that I've created what I want to do is instantiate random points on that sphere so one way I can do that let's see under vector grid there is a um, populate geometry component so what this does is it takes any geometry that you have and it'll populate random points on it. Okay, so I'm gonna use this populate geometry component, drop it into the canvas, and I'm gonna mouse over what it's looking for. So it's looking for the geometry to populate. So that'll be my sphere, so I can connect that. It'll ask, okay, how many points do you want me to add onto that sphere? Right, and so you'll notice that it's already doing it. So if I mouse over, by default, it's 100. So again, I'm going to bring in a number slider. And the other way to do this is I can double click and just start typing a number. So if I want, uh, you know, I want to have a range of around 200, I could just start typing 250. And it'll give me a number slider with bounds that contain that number that I just gave it. So I can plug that into this and have a lot more points so I can control how many points are on that sphere. All right, and then the others aren't as important. We're gonna ignore those for now. The seed is the kind of seed for the random generation that the algorithm does. So there's different options for it. So those points will end up being in different places if I wanna change that seed number but I'm gonna leave it as is. And let's say I want each of these points to um, be the center of kind of an organic grid cell pattern, like a, like a cell, cellular pattern that you'll see in nature. Um, let's say I'm modeling a diatom or um, you know some kind of leaf structure or a dragon wing, uh, like a dragonfly wing. Um, I'm going to go into the mesh component. There's, uh, there's a component called Voronoi. Um, that's, a, that's the pattern that you see in dragonfly wings that, again, it's cellular based. So they kind of, uh, they use the, the point as its center and the proximity to its neighbor to create a boundary. So you'll see in a second what that does. So I'm going to use this Voronoi 3D component and mousing over that asks for points for that diagram and an optional boundary uh, for, the, for the model that it's about to generate. Okay, so I can plug in my points into that and you'll see that it creates, so it's using, if I mouse over this, it's using this kind of boundary box as my perimeter um, but it's, uh, it's using each of these points as the center of uh, the grid cell. Okay, so one thing that we can now do is intersect this geometry, because what I wanna do, and I'm gonna, if I wanna disconnect something, I can always hold control and then click and drag, and now this is orange again because it's not getting any data. So I can disconnect it by holding control. You can plug in multiple things into the same input by holding shift, right? So again, I wanna disconnect that, so I hold control, hold shift to select multiple things. Otherwise, if you just do that without holding shift, it'll replace the previous one, okay? so. Hold shift to have multiple streams of input. Hold control to disconnect. 
All right, so what I want to do is I want this um, sphere, I want to be able to create line work from the intersection of this sphere and this Voronoi pattern. And I want to create that line work as kind of a projection onto the sphere, okay? So I want to see those cell, like those cell outlines. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to reconnect this. So what I need to do is basically take the sphere, take the Voronoi, and have the two intersect. So one thing I also recommend when you start working in Grasshopper, go to View, make sure Obscure Components is turned on. Um, if it's not, you're not going to see all of the toolbars. You're not going to see everything up there. So um, go to Intersect. And what we want to do is see, we, we want a physical um, collision of two B reps or two poly surfaces. Okay, so I'm going to select that. So what this does is it it looks at the collision of two geom pieces of geometry and then it finds, uh, it outputs curves for wherever those two pieces of geometry collided. So we're going to take our Voronoi pattern and then see where it collides with that sphere, outputting some curves that we can use. Okay, so mousing over this, it's looking for the first B rep and the second B rep. And we can plug in the sphere to one and the Voronoi to the other. And you'll notice this is turning green. Um, so when it's selected, it'll turn green. When you click away from it, it'll be red. And if I want to hide all of this, because it's kind of confusing, I can select all of this, right click and say uh, preview off. So when, with preview off, it's still running the calculation. It's just hiding that geometry because I just want to see this. I want to see our final output um, here. Okay, so what we're left with is this kind of three-dimensional Voronoi um, on the sphere of that, uh, on the surface of the sphere. Okay, and then when we're happy with this, we can then bring it into Rhino. So if I were to just close Grasshopper now, that geometry is gone. Right? I can type Grasshopper, it comes back, but I want that in my Rhino workspace. So what I'm going to do is select this component that I want to bring in, right? I'm happy with this line work. I'm going to middle mouse click on the canvas and hit bake. Once it's baked, now it's in Rhino and each of these are curves. So if I wanted to edit this and continue working, or if I wanted to extrude something, right, I can now I can now modify this and edit it in Rhino. But then going back into Grasshopper, let's say I wanted to bake this. Right, so I'm going to just preview it so we see what we're looking at. So let's say I wanted to preview this um, Voronoi pattern in Rhino. So I can select that. select that object, middle mouse click, and hit bake. Now that's in Rhino. And I can select multiple objects, pull this apart, kind of see what's happening here. Hit Control Z. So that's how to create kind of a basic script in Grasshopper, model it, uh, and then bake it into Rhino so you have, uh, you have the geometry to, to play with and to work with. Okay, so what Grasshopper is doing is it's creating this series of components. It's reading it from left to right, starting with a point, creating a sphere, populating that geometry, using those points for my Voronoi diagram, and then intersecting the sphere with that Voronoi diagram to give me a set of curves that I can then use in, in Rhino. So at this point, we have a Voronoi intersecting a sphere. I'm gonna turn these off. And we can take these curves and multi-pipe them. So if we go to the Surface tab, you can go to Multi-Pipe, 
This is a sub D function and it's asking for curves and a node size. I'm just going to type 0.22 into that and end up with a three-dimensional uh, pipe that we can then bake into Rhino.